The first League of Cambria has been called and the War of the Holy Leagues is about to begin as the year is 1513 and the Papal States look to take back control of the Italian Peninsula. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD. It's been a little while since I've last done a battle on this mod actually. I've just been really, really, I guess, enjoying other things. But we are back in the mod and I'm very excited to see this massive historical battle played out in front of our eyes. It is a pretty large scale one. As you can see, there is over 11,000 soldiers on either side of the battle. That is absolutely wild. Over 20,000 soldiers. There's not many other games that let you see battles in this scale. Um, one of the things I really hope they do do in the mod is add in the larger battlefield mod because obviously in situations like this, uh, you know, you, you're basically redlining on either side of the battlefield, which kind of sucks. So hopefully they follow suit like Rise of Mordor did and add in the larger battlefields as I think that can make these huge scale engagements really, really exciting. Uh, that is for sure. But yes, if you guys don't know what the hell the First League of Cam is basically the Italian states are looking to take back control of the northern Italian provinces from Venice. Venice are refusing to go ahead and give that back so the First League of Cambria has been called and this was a war that I believe lasted for around about three years of uh, facing several battles uh, the Spanish and the Aragonese went ahead and supported the Papal States and France went ahead and supported the Venetians along with I think Milan, oh, Milan's on one of the sides uh, and basically there just was a bunch of battles that followed suit um, and then obviously there was you know, these huge engagements like we're seeing today so we do have if we take a look at the teams over on this far left hand side and it's definitely a very misty battlefield today we have the, the Swiss the Swiss mercenary is going to be aiding their Italian... Are these, are, this is the Italian side? I'm not actually too sure. We can actually see if we just take a look at that. Yeah, so this is the, yeah, the Italian side. There's Aragon is in the center. So yeah, we have the Swiss, obviously, with their elite men. The heavy pikemen, so well known and loved. And I believe the Swiss also have got a, a couple extra units in this patch as well. Uh, so it's going to be cool to kind of see what they are made of in this battle. Then guarding up the center, we do have a force from Aragon. So again, just a lot of these Spanish units that we uh, know and love. Then supporting them, we do have the Papal States. I don't think the Pope is leading this army but uh, I don't know maybe he is we'll obviously take a look at the generals so we have a lot of these uh, obviously papal infantrymen supported by some uh, Catalonians back there and also some of the more heavier kind of medieval units here kind of look like Normans right there they also have some halberds some Swiss halberds and some other Pavese infantry we then also have Milan on the far flank again the Milanese infantry always looking so goddamn nice with that kind of like larger buckler shield and that weapon uh, looking awesome with the uh, Milanese cavalry right back here we have the Ducal supporting his infantry uh, going to be very heavily. And then finally, on the far right flank, I believe the French are here. Did I miss the French? This is a 4 versus 4 um, I can't have missed the French, though. The French are here somewhere, um, but I guess maybe not. Maybe the French aren't in this battle. No, I guess not. Okay, well, that's, uh, I guess that's fine. I could have sworn the French uh, were on the battle intro, but I guess not. But over on the other side of things, we do have the Genoese. So we have some of the heavy infantry. Oh, no, sorry. France is on this side. What the hell am I talking about? We have the Genoese supported by Toulouse, and I love the Toulousean cavalry as well. Uh, really dig their horse covers. Uh, just looking absolutely amazing. Uh, we obviously have plenty of heavy infantry. Right here, some free company footmen. Super heavily armored, ready to get stuck in, supported by them heavy sergeants. And I, I, again, I really, really dig these kind of French shields right there. They're so unique, and I love that they're uh, you know, just part of this region right here. Then we do finally have, I assume, the uh, more Genoese there. And I assume, finally, we do have the French for some reason, I thought they were on the other side, but no, they are fighting the Spanish, obviously, the French and Spanish fighting so much in their times of war. So you can see all their infantry there. And then finally, on the far right flank, we have some more French infantry supported by uh, the Venetians, who are kind of the, the main kind of kickoff of this war with some of their chain mail as well. So let's just get this battle started. It was a little bit of a long intro as I blundered my way through the factions. Uh, for some reason, why I thought France was on the other side. But we're going to kick this one off with a little missile engagement in the forest. Lots of crossbow fire. 
you know, kind of ricocheting across the center of the battlefield. You can see a lot of bowmen coming in, but luckily these pavis can use their shields pretty effectively to repel the missile fire, actually not losing a single man in these volleys. And that's kind of one of the strengths of the pavis is just that ability to hammer away. And I mean, obviously these archers aren't going to be that effective. They don't have great armor piercing, so... You know, I've always found that it's not really worth using that missile fire on the enemies if they have pavis. Like, it's better just to try and focus down infantry, maybe try and kill some halberds. Uh, but then again, they do have the range advantage, so it's not going to be too bad for them. And I think for the most part, missiles don't really do a whole crazy amount to late tier units uh, in 12-12. When the armor is so effective, unless you are firing in volley after volley after volley of crossbow bolts. And then all of a sudden, it does become pretty crazy. You can also see both players using this cavalry very, very effectively. Trying just to scare off the enemy missiles. You'll see this kind of throughout the battlefield. Because the flanks are pretty closed in due to the red line. You're going to be seeing cavalry like this running down the channels of the battlefield. And just basically trying to scare off enemy missiles to give their missiles an advantage. And obviously players will be looking to counter that. However, it does seem like the French have managed to catch. Oh no, they have managed to catch the Swiss crossbows off guard. And there is no infantry here to guard them. And the cavalry is just going to come clashing in, smashing in the infantry and crossbows alike, as well as engaging the Venetian horse on the far right flank. And the French knights are going to be heavily armoured. They are going to be looking to pull out of this battle, but we do have the Doge himself charging in. The Doge's bodyguard moving in to try and cut off the French retreat, as well as the cavalry manoeuvring around as well. The French are going to pull out, though, of this battlefield. Um, after just inflicting a lot of damage against the Aragonese and the Swiss in that battle, uh, taking down a large amount of their crossbows. We also have an infantry engagement over on this right-hand side as the Talesians go to war with the Papal States, their battle lines clashing, and I mean, just admire that. Look at that. That's, uh, for me, what Total War is all about, seeing the units just advancing in the distance, cavalry moving, infantry lines clashing. What more could you want? And if you guys are enjoying this battle, make sure to drop a like and a comment on it. It really helps out the channel. Consider becoming a YouTube member just for as little as $2. And obviously, uh, you can check me out on Patreon as well if you wanted to. Uh, so we have some pretty heavy cavalry fights right here. I want to go ahead and make sure we can see basically everything that is going on. Because this battle is popping off pretty fast. And we can go on slow-mo as well. As we said, we don't want to miss any of the action that is kind of erupting in this battle so it does seem like the two right flank the right flank if we're taking a look from the papal states point of view have fully engaged now the left flank for the papal states did have a bit of a skirmish in the french cavalry i think definitely came out on top of that um, and it's always very interesting in these battles because the way these players engage really dictate, you know, kind of how the battle evolves as, you know, flanks start to crumble and other players have to react to that. And it basically just creates a really interesting dynamic. We do have some cavalry over on this side as well as the Milanese try and get a nice rear charge off into the Toulouse sergeants. However, these guys are heavily armored enough to repel this and I'm sure they'll be able to put them spears down. Look at Theodim rallying the men uh, and unfortunately probably going to be going down very soon as these spears are going to be able to find their mark into the gaps of the armor, slay the horse, and then slay the rider. However, more Milanese infantry are being thrown forward uh, bit by bit, looking to engage them with their heavily armored gloves and these smaller shields uh, armored with maces and several other equipments. I think this armor might be a work in progress because that looks pretty... Uh, basic? Uh, I think this Milanese unit maybe needs a... I don't know. Maybe this is what it looked like, but I don't know. These look like really uh, weird assets. So I think that's probably going to be something that they are improving, I would assume. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that is what it looked like. Because obviously you can take a look at the units. There is no shabbiness right here when it comes to these battle lines because they just look insane. The uh, quality of 12-12 is unmatched in Total War. I mean, just... Oh, I mean, that's, uh, that's something special right there. That probably has to be the thumbnail as the archers continue to rack off shot after shot over the battle line, looking to hit away as many of these pavis. But the shields are just so effective. Like, they barely lost any men. Uh, you know, it's not really working in their favor. It does seem that like the Papal State, with the power of God, is repelling the forces 
of the Genoese, though, as they throw in more of their men. I mean, they are throwing in lighter infantry into the battle. And that's probably one of the reasons they just can't break through these heavier spear lines from the Spanish. The Spanish also have the Cataline Company as well, who are throwing in their javelins into the back line. So any reinforcement infantry that look to make their way into the impactful fight just are not going to be as successful as they would like. And we can probably go back up to normal speed now as the battle is continuing to move on. We have a nice little push right through here by the heavier Genoese infantry here. The knights just clashing against their basically identical brethren right here. Uh, these are just, you know, heavy knight, the heavy knight. Very hard to tell who's who as none of them do have the coat of arms on their chest or anything. More cavalry charges coming in, looking to try and take out the lancers. Another cavalry charge there by the Toulouse smashing into the front of the Milanese infantry and again if we take a look at the overall battlefield you can see this right flank has pretty much opened up for the Milanese if they wanted to make their way around the French have also uh, tried to stick away from this fight as much as possible I think they're really trying to see what happens over on this side before committing but I definitely think the French do have the advantage if they want to push on that right flank because they are demolishing the uh, the Swiss cavalry right now just completely outnumbering it, surrounding it, and taking it down. But this does probably mean that the friendly horses are going to be elsewhere, aiding their other teammates, as uh, most players always bring the max amount of cavalry just because it is so effective. And unless the heavy pikemen can get her in time, I think we're going to see a flood of this cavalry running through this gap. They're also managing to get this unit of elite French horse round the back and now this can cause a lot of issues whether it's going after these crossbows whether it's rear charging into this big clump or maneuvering around here you can see all the cavalry coming around and now that this line has broken you're going to see a big push now by the French in this awesome formation I'm one for I love these kind of formation attacks when we kind of got these blocks of infantry I'm always a big, big fan of those. And yeah, you can see the French supported by the Venetians are in an all-out assault right now, not letting the uh, Swiss form up and try and, you know, reconsolidate with the rest of their army. And let, let's go, like, super slow camera uh, really quickly, if it will let me. For some reason, Attila doesn't let me do this, but Rome 2 does. It's really weird. Uh, yeah, not going to let me. But we can, go, we can do this, I think. Let me just try and get the perfect... I mean, that's, that's pretty fast, but you guys can just see the craziness of this battle line unfold. If I just go down the battle line, I would love to have done this slower. But for some reason, Attila doesn't let me uh, with page down really slot the camera. I mean, that looks insane. I, it just goes for miles on end. As the cavalry continues to hammer and anvil into their opponents, the Catalonians... Reforming up to throw them javelins. The middle of looking to exploit the flanks that have been created on this right-hand side as these guys move around the flank. Oh, one of the generals have gone down as well. Our allied general has fallen. Who is that? Oh, the Swiss general breaking. Uh, that is not good at all as he kind of have, has abandoned his men over on this side as the French have continued to push hard. And you've got infantry moving through these channels, looking to reinforce. And once again, that looks amazing. Obviously not wanting to engage the Spiss, uh, the, the, Spiff, the Swiss pikes from the front. So we're going to be looking to uh, you know, exploit these gaps. And if these pikes move, and that's one of the reasons these pikes can't really move. Because as soon as they do, they're going to get hit from the front or the back. So they're kind of doomed if they do, doomed if they don't. But the French are going to find their way into the backs of these pikemen. And this flank is looking very, very dire for the Venetians and the Aragonese. As the French are just overrunning them. Cavalry everywhere. Oh, the French general, though, being very risky. And he's going to get charged in there by the Aragonian general. Aragon looking to try and cut the head off the snake. And that would be a huge blow for the French if he is caught. If we take a look at the far flank, though, as we've been kind of focused in on the French, we are seeing a pretty large cavalry engagement as Toulouse continue to engage against the Milanese. It does seem like the Milanese are losing this fight for the Papal States. However, they do have some halberds turning up, and this will obviously be a huge help to this fight. One of the enemy generals, though, does go down, and it is going to be the, uh, the Ducal, I think, being slain. One of the generals going down. Wait, was that? That can't have been the general's bodyguard, right? Maybe it was. Oh, my God. I think that was the Genoese general. He's on, like, 52 men. He's, like, on 40 men. That is brutal. 
The Archer Volley is coming in as well. A bit of threat. Obviously, there's actually Javelin Fire coming in. Just looking to try and kill as many of these horses as possible. And it's kind of okay uh, as they are heavily outnumbered here. And yeah, as you can see, Milan has ripped, absolutely demolished the Genoese on this side. And they're completely pushed off. And yeah, look at that. If you take a look at the battlefield, you can see it's been basically been a complete victory on this right flank. The Papal States and the Milanese completely winning this side. But obviously the same can be said over on the other flank for the French. What a brutal battle this has been so far as the French cavalry continues to circle. And it does seem like we're going to be getting a full-on retreat by what remains from the Swiss and Aragon. Looking to form up with their sides that have won. If we take a look at the kills of the battlefield, you can see that the uh, Papal States are looking pretty good. With 7,700 men still left remaining. Uh, whereas the French only at 5,800. So it's looking pretty good for them. However, the balance of power is still pretty even. Uh, again, uh, it's really going to come down to who can clean up their battles faster, reform up, and reinforce. You know, if the French can form up that battle line with the rest of their allies before the Papal States can really consolidate their forces, then numbers don't really mean too much because you can just rout the enemy very, very effectively. And the cavalry is doing its best to try and catch these routing units off guard before they can reform, break them. Um, and send them packing. I'm sure all of a sudden, yeah, the numbers have definitely shortened in. It was around about 2,000 man difference. Now it's, uh, yeah, now it's down to about 1,500. So they are doing a great job. However, this defense is being formed up and the Milanese need to rush over here as quickly as possible. There's a handful of other infantry still scattered and this battle still has a ways to go. 16 minutes left on the, uh, on the clock right now as both sides form up. So neither side is quite done. Uh, these archers are going to quickly try and form up. We have a front line here. So if you take a look at what's really left, the Swiss still have a front line of these swordsmen supported by some halberds. Also some heavy pikes as well. Pretty nice. Aragon have their king's bodyguard. The Papal States still have a decent front line to be had. And obviously Milan is coming in. That archer volley though, blacking out the sun and just trying to kill as many of these Genoese uh, knights as possible as they try and fall back between the uh, battle lines and try and get behind the Frenches. Both sides really form up. I mean, that always looks so cool. And that's one of the reasons I love these guys when they send me in the battle replays. Is it the battles are never just kind of that initial stage where both sides clash infantry and then that's it. There's always more to it and I love the formations they create. You know, I'm one for these dense formations. I love them. Uh, especially on these bigger maps. I love seeing people create fun and interesting uh, battle lines. You know, definitely getting one at this stage of the battle as the French quickly try and reform up. Uh, the nice thing is as well, all these players are talking to one another as well. Uh, we've already triple speed as the forces do get a little bit closer to one another. I mean, realistically, it's probably, you know, in favor of the French if they want to assault. Uh, but again, they're trying to use their not their number disadvantage um, and trying to turn that around. Obviously, using this farmland, this building as a, a, a deterrent for the attackers to come in, protecting their flank pretty effectively, um, which will obviously be very, very useful. Um, and they obviously have forests on their left-hand side as well, so you can see them using this terrain as effectively as possible. One of the big things to look at as well is how much cavalry both sides have left. And I think probably... The uh, Papal States have a bit more horse left, which is never too good. Uh, but these archers are doing a pretty decent job at just kind of cleaning out the front lines, uh, picking off a, you know, a handful of men uh, here, here and there. And, uh, you know, that's definitely helping out the man advantage, though, definitely shifting back in favor of the Papal States, or even more in favor of the Papal States, as that is almost, you know, it's about 1,800 now as well, which is very scary, honestly. Um, but maybe, maybe this kind of defensive position can hold them. I honestly think... Charging forward might have been the best plan of action and just try and catch them before they had uh, a large amount of their army engaged. But then again, you could find yourself very quickly uh, enveloped. You know, if you're fully committed to this fight, trying to kill the Swiss, the Papal States, uh, and then you don't do it in time and then Milan turns up uh, with the rest of their army, then that could be pretty scary. Um, but yeah, I think the French are just kind of, you know, they know that they're at a disadvantage. They want to sit back and just try their best to uh, withstand the enemy assaults. And just basically encourage everyone else to come forward at them, which you definitely can't fault. We're also getting some more infantry being committed around here, along with the cavalry as well. Uh, these lancers could definitely turn the tides of this battle um, if they can. 
Uh, and they're going to just kind of position this cavalry in the woods. It just there seems like there's so much still left for the for the papal states. But these battle lines are not easily broken, uh, even with the archers. And I think for the most part, and again, you got to think of this as well, is a lot of that man advantage is probably coming in these 160-man archers who are out of ammunition. You know, that's a lot of missiles, and that's, that adds up a lot of the, the disadvantage as well. We are going to be a unit of this heavy Swiss pike bow moving in. That looks great. Look at that, man. That looks awesome. Uh, we're going to be trying to come in at an angle. This is always a great way to use your pikes. They're going to come in at an angle and just try and hit the, uh, the enemy right here, which is always a good idea. However, all the archer fire is probably going to be trained on them. We've also got some infantry lines as well trying to fight on. But the defenders are doing a pretty good job. They've got heavy spearmen supported by the pikes going all battle of the bastards. As the infantry lines really get thrown against one another now. And Milan have to use their man advantage in this battle. They really have to commence forward. To break away these sergeants is going to be hard. They have to use this cavalry as well. They definitely outnumber the enemy. And now it's going to be up to the French to move in. They're going to come out of the woods with their lancers. And actually do a pretty good job of trying to scare off these guys. However, they're going to realize things are too late. And the battle horses are going to clash with the cavalry moving around, but obviously they just have the numbers. They can easily support more infantry if they want to, uh, to this fight. And now the reserves are being fully committed on both sides. However, the French line is holding. And as I said, it's going to really come down to whether or not these kind of sideward positions can maneuver around, can get stuck in. Your cavalry are coming over looking to try and charge in to these units. However, the general from the French are going to move in and you know, kind of throw his life on the line here to engage the Pope's bodyguard. I really wish... Uh, I, I think they do have standards in the game. You can see the French uh, general there with the golden crown. I'm pretty sure they do have... Um, like battle kind of standards like they had in medieval 2 with the like the big throne but I don't think the Pope is in so it'd be cool if we do get to see a battle Pope at some point I think that'd be really cool the Catalonians are throwing in a lot of their javelins accepting that you know it doesn't matter if they lose some cavalry as long as they kill the enemy horse and they're doing a pretty good job of that right now as both generals are all committed on this side I um, mean, it seems like the attackers have a pretty solid advantage. Their flanking forces are now coming in. Obviously, going to be using their numbers to their advantage, forcing the Venetians to reform the battle line as the missiles continue to move around. And I'm pretty sure I saw a routing unit in the center here. And this could create some pretty negative gaps there for the attackers. If any of these French units create a gap by routing, is probably over but they're also doing a pretty good job as well at repelling the enemy forces there are some blue units routing right now and we've also got some cavalry back here as well uh the venetian lancers just going to try and take out any of these archers and really kind of sound off of that advantage that they have the uh the general cavalry vote for france getting completely in but i think that's going to be his uh his graveyard unfortunately as more of the catalonians move in now Engaging the more heavily armoured French, but still fighting on. The archers are notching their bows, trying to just volley in. And, you know, it's one of the nice things you can do is just trying to fire in, you know, knowing that you don't have the advantage of the battle fight. And just, you know, feel free to, if you do a bit of friendly fire, you do a bit of friendly fire. It's not normally the end of the world. But you guys can see the battle lines are shaping up. Quite nicely, and I mean, the French have managed to repel pretty heavily the assaults, but they're just buying time for these units to flank around them. That's exactly what is happening. Cavalry moving around. We've got infantry that's completely overlapping the Pope's men moving in to this fight. And that's always going to be very negative because if these guys can get around the flank, if they can get onto infantry, then all hope is lost. But the, oh my god, look at that though. The Aragonese are breaking and this is going to you know, ease up a lot of pressure on the French. They're going to be able to commit their men elsewhere and even over on this side, their cavalry is proving pretty strong as the Doge's bodyguard, the Venetian general charging in and probably slaying the, the Milanese general pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, this battle is definitely not over yet. The French are putting up a mighty last stand. I just feel like these overlaps are so brutal. The French the French are sending more men to reinforce, and uh, this could turn the tide of battle. I mean, the balance of power is in favor of the Pope, but 
you know, generals are dying. And that could send chain routes. Numbers are dropping heavily. And that advantage is falling down. This flank is, is really helpful. And these pikemen are holding firm. And the lack of missiles for the Papal States is it's pretty brutal. And somehow the cavalry has now switched. They've managed to claim this one. The Doge's bodyguard is going to have free reign to kill a lot of these men. And look at these routes firing. Oh my god, the front. I mean, there's still seven minutes left. So this battle is still got a ways to go. But there is a lot of shaky morale on the Papal States. Where is their faith? More men being sent around these flanks, which I think is a great idea to reinforce. And it does seem like one of the Venetian units have broken, which is pretty bad. Because all of a sudden, this unit of Halberds is going to get hit from the side. I don't even Halberds. This is a heavy knight unit. It's going to get hit from the side. Um, as well as these spears coming around the back as well. They really want to try their best to outflank as much as they can. However, they are going to get engaged. These pikes are probably going to go down just in time. Oh, a little bit too delayed. And these knights are going to get stuck in. And that's bye-bye to this pike unit. There is no way that they're going to stick around uh, with the knights getting that into their formation. However, reinforcements from the Swiss are quite quickly on the way. Looking to reinforce as uh, yeah, as fast as possible. Uh, as they definitely need the man advantages. They just need to keep on putting this pressure on the French. But I feel like the flanks are pretty secure now. And with the cavalry causing mayhem in the back lines, that's drawing more men away. And yeah, I mean, look at this. The French are holding. These battle lines are keeping the enemy at bay. The pikes are hitting one another. But you know, nothing is too scary for them to really deal with. And uh, Vance Power has all of a sudden shifted back. You know, kind of almost in favor. Slightly in favor of the French. And I mean, look at that. The man count now is all of a sudden... You know, only a 200-man difference, and that number is dropping extremely quickly. You know, all of a sudden, that's close to a 100-man difference. It was 2,000 a second ago. This battle line is proving deadly, and, uh, you know, the French might be able to go on the offensive pretty soon. Losing some men here and there, but the archers still have ammunition left, hitting away these tired units. The French moving over to try and engage the enemy general, slaying him in battle. Wow, the Doge's bodyguard coming in clutch, and again, that's going to send a shockwave throughout the Papal States army. Fire arrows coming in, really trying to inflict that morale damage, as fire arrows do cause a pretty deadly morale debuff. Men are just breaking left, right, and center as arrows hit them as they try and flee from the battlefield. Man, I, I, I honestly thought the uh, the Papal States had this one. I mean, they obviously still might, but it's looking very good. The comeback is definitely real in this battle. And uh, yeah, I mean, this right flank is is folding in on itself pretty quickly. Obviously, the Halberds are being outranged by the pikemen here. Not a great engagement from this right flank. Has now been cleaned up. And all of a sudden, we are seeing the Venetians outflanking the Papal States. Uh, that's kind of hilarious considering how up against it they were. And I just can't really see many. I mean, besides this center point right here, there's not really many other positions that are going in favor of God's army, you know, whatsoever. And this could be a pretty good place to just hammer arrows in as well as they are so bulked up right now. Yeah, pretty nice defense there. And they are routing units as well. Uh, there are some more reinforcements though around this flank. Going to be looking to try and put a little bit of pressure on. Do that little bit of morale damage. As these archers continue to fire off shot after shot. But with the reinforcements here, I mean, you know, you can just throw in some French archers here as well. And I believe these French archers are fairly decent as well. Because in 1212, if you don't know, heavy archers are very good. Uh, even in melee combat, they can definitely hold their own. However, if we take a look at the battlefield, you can see a huge break here by the Papal States forces. And that's going to free up a ton of extra infantry. It's also going to allow this cavalry to continue to move in. There's not much horse left, really, in the battle. But, you know, any of that, actually, that general breaks. I think all sides have really lost their general now in the fight. Also, for some reason, the, uh, the battle sounds have, uh, have cut off as if I'm uh, triple speeding it, which I'm not. How weird, but all the battle sounds, the cheering has uh, fallen off. Which is kind of weird, but oh well. And the battle is wrapping up by only two and a half minutes left. And uh, 
You know, it still could go either way. I think the French are definitely looking pretty good now. They have a 700 man advantage as this infantry who are surrounding. Well, look at that. The, uh, the heavy pikes from Switzerland still holding firm. I mean, it's to be expected, right? These brave warriors are going to be brutal to try and break. And they have got their backs up against the wall. I think they might even be in a square formation, but the arrows are now starting to find the holes in the formation and pick away, and they might end up breaking. There is more men maneuver around. You've got heavy knights engaging against lowly archers. And I think the French are going to take this one down with reinforcements you know, coming in from every single side. The center's uh, position's not looking great. I mean, they're still racking up a decent amount of kills, but... You know, they are taking casualties and every man is going to add up in that morale factor. That army loss is going to start to kick in. And yeah, they only have 1,600 men left and that number is dropping very quickly. And the French are going to pull this one out considering the French were at a 2,000 man disadvantage. They are now going to go ahead and claim this one. Uh, pretty impressive. Uh, definitely this terrain helped out massively, forcing the attackers to go the long way around. Them cavalry engagements doing a pretty decent job. Uh, and the Papal States are still kind of holding up a little bit of resistance on this left-hand side with their Milanese uh, friends. The Milanese have definitely done uh, very good in this battle, uh, taking down the Genoese and uh, moving on pretty handedly to reinforce. So it was definitely the right, you know, right idea to hold back, kind of just wait for them to come to our, come to them, because yeah, maybe their infantry lines would have just been completely outflanked if they would have given up that these kind of defensive positions that they did have, having the forest to their left and the defensive buildings to their right was, uh, yeah, definitely beneficial to them. We got some of the uh, the longbowmen here as well, pulling out their blades, looking to get their swords bloodied. And there is a valiant defeat indeed. What an amazing battle that was. Uh, great engagement from both sides. And you can definitely see the losses racking up heavy. Look at that. The Genoese losing 2,300 men. That is crazy. Uh, and the, the Swiss also losing 2,000. Aragon losing 2,000 men as well. Not many left remaining for either side. I mean, besides Venice, Ven this is kind of war has been kicked off because of Venice. And they're the ones holding their army back. I mean, look at that. Genoa, only 400 men left remaining. The French, only 1,000 left as well. Pretty crazy stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. A uh, massive shout out to all my YouTube members and my Patreons. And I'll see you guys in the next one.